there are other entrepreneurs out there who are listening. They're tuned in, maybe mm-hmm. even right now on Facebook. And they're in their first few years doing business. What's your advice to them? Let's say they're in their second or third year right now. They are struggling a little bit. There are cash flow problems. There are a little bit of pro- problems with with their uh, employees. Mm-hmm. What's your advice to them? It's really being able to, you know, <coughs> um, get your emotions checked. You know, uh, keep your priorities checked. Your mm-hmm. your in in your your mission. Mm-hmm. So that's that's number one. A second uh, advice that I would say is biggest mistake that usually entrepreneurs will get into is that they they go all in to one mm-hmm. one thing. But for me, is always make sure that you always have a spare tire. And mm-hmm. my father in law would always say that to me as well. Mm-hmm. But my my version is that you know as an entrepreneur, you are your you're the manager of your own cash flow, mm-hmm. and you have to make sure that you're not just receiving cash flow from one area. Mm-hmm. or burning from one particular uh, resource. So you mm-hmm. have to make sure that you, you have at least two or more mm-hmm. because if your venture fails, you, you, you have to make sure that you're going to survive. Yeah. So in my case, uh, when I was starting Pandora, I was doing some odd jobs, mm-hmm. uh, some side consultancy, mm-hmm. and then at the same time, you know, building another business mm-hmm. to make sure that, you know, if this business fails mm. at least i have another one yeah or at, le- at least both would be will be able to survive mm. and thrive for yeah the matter so that's what i did you know you have to make sure that you have a spare tire yeah because you know it, when push comes to shove if 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 bleep hits the fan you yeah. know uh you know you, you don't want to you, you don't want to find yourself you know uh yeah. full of remorse yeah. full of regret and you, you, you'd feel bad about yourself mm. you know making a bad decision mm. so and so forth no uh, failure is always you know i mean sounds like a cliche but you know it's always something that you know it's a one step forward yeah uh, you learn something how not to do that mm-hmm. you know so it's just to, to make a cushion for yourself on mm-hmm. a personal level that you won't you know find yourself in that position that okay i'm back to zero yeah no you're always you know in that level that okay i i'm i'm, I'm managing my portfolio i'm managing yeah. my cash flow and i i want to invest in this and i'm going all into this but i still have a reserve mm-hmm. something like that so mm-hmm. i would always advise to always make sure that you have more than two uh, sources of income uh uh either that be you're an employee yeah uh, your employee so that's one source of income yeah look at it as a business you're the asset yeah and then you're doing your own business so that right. could be one aspect or at the same time you have two businesses you're running two businesses yeah. that could be the same thing yeah. we're doing uh consulting jobs so that's yeah. another perspective yeah that's how, how i actually started my my my, my uh my route mm-hmm. and the third advice uh, on a practical sense is that you know don't be too in love with your product mm-hmm. uh wow. let, let, let me quantify that okay. uh don't be in, too much in love with your product but be in love with your mission mm-hmm. because um i was somehow you know uh um <coughs> uh, i found myself towards that direction wherein mm-hmm. i was so focused in you know building the best product Mm-hmm. You know, I was so in love with the product. I made something so well, mm. but I lost touch with the mission. I lost touch with the market. Yeah, that it to- uh, it made totally no sense mm-hmm. to the business. Wow! I built something so good. It's it's like saying I'm not saying that this is what Elon Musk did, but you know, if they make a let's say a spaceship for uh, you know uh, just for doing uh, a certain feat, you know. Yeah. If it was just blank, going to the sun, yeah, going something to the sun, like or something like yeah. that, <laughs> it, it made no sense. But it was a, it, it was a great product. But yeah. you know, it made no sense. Then uh, we veered off from the mission. So yeah. for me, it's really understanding that when you create a product, you know, you have to be able to still look yourself in the mirror and say, a- "Am I building this product for the mission, mm. or am I doing this because it's just for me to feel good about myself that I built something good?" Yeah. So for me is I, I I see a lot of you know entrepreneurs or somehow people you know just so in love with their own product their, their own baby yeah that they 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 were so engrossed yeah with the idea engrossed with the idea that you know uh, I'm I'm so good I built yeah. this that the entire company you know burned through its yeah uh, runway rem- uh, runway uh, burned through cash yeah. and then found ourselves you know. Uh, in the brink of you know bankruptcy and then right. folded, yeah. and you, you don't want that to happen. So for me, is uh, understand your purpose, go mm-hmm. back to the mission, and and see. Because for me, back then, just to sh- to to set an example, 
yeah. was we were building our first product and I was so in love with it. Yeah. But you know, uh, we were we were down almost a million. Wow. And then for me, it was like, okay, we have to accept that this product is not gonna sell yet. Mm. So we have to make a certain move. We have to yeah. sell a different product first to make the company survive. Yeah. Because we're in this mission to, you know, to make a point. Yeah. So I had to go out, sell a different service, sell yeah. a different type of product, yeah. do odd jobs again for the company, and then wow. raise new cash. And then eventually find ourselves, okay, this is the right time to rebuild the product and see if it fits. Yeah. And then by the time it made sense, then came Pandora. Wow. Yeah. It's a difficult, difficult mountain to climb. And that's yeah. really good stuff for you out there who are mm. going to be starting your own entrepreneurial journey or who are thinking about it or who are, as Isaac said, in the middle of the bridge. That's really good advice. Don't get too engrossed in your product. Know that you're going to be sacrificing a lot of things and thrive in chaos. Things are going to be uncertain. You're not going to know what's going to happen. Amen. Um, Isaac is in the business of ones and zeros. Either he makes it big or he doesn't. It's a tech company. He was way ahead of his time. And now, thank God, he has been able to merge um, with a company that just makes a lot of sense in terms <laughs> of the business need and the, the close community of customers that they have. Now, with that uh, advice to entrepreneurs, I'm going to ask another thing for them. There are entrepreneurs right now who may be on the same boat. They're like five, seven, eight years on the on the runway. Mm -hmm. And they might be making money. They might not, but they have a good offer or mm -hmm. they have a good um, merger and a uh, merger offer mm -hmm. that they're thinking about. What's mm -hmm. your advice to these kinds of entrepreneurs? You can look at it two ways. Personally, and of course, objectively, um, from the perspective of the company. So for me, I, could, I you have to consider both. Uh, uh, it's not looking at two ways, but you have to consider both. Yeah. So first is for the company, what would it entail? Mm -hmm. and, and of course, for the people that you built uh, mm -hmm. uh, your relationship with. Your relationship with. So you, you have to factor that in. You have to consider that. So uh, for me, it's really first, of course, making if it actually makes sense doing the deal in the first place. Mm -hmm commercially uh, at the same time if it aligns to your mission mm -hmm. so like i said uh since i would always go back to my story our main mission was to make it big and to showcase that okay we we're, were able to do this yeah. and and we're proud that our product is now being used by even though we're now not pandora labs yeah. we're, we're now bolton it's being used elsewhere and mm -hmm. we're happy about that and it's it for me it's something that you know we take pride in yeah. you know how uh, many people by the way do you know how many people use your your software right now um, not people, but I would say companies. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, I would say, um, it's in the in the numbers of at least a hundred. A hundred people, a hundred companies. companies. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, that's huge. Congratulations. At least, at least, it's a blessing. Yeah. Any uh, anything else about the merge uh, about entrepreneurs who are wanting to merge or get oh, acquired? Yeah. From the personal on a personal note, of course. If you're single, of course, then you just have to look into, you know, what are your next plans, what yeah. are your goals, yeah. what are your ambitions. Before uh, signing anything. So, so, yeah, of course, before signing anything. And uh, of course, uh, like in my case, I was married, you know, of course, you consult your wife mm -hmm. because of course, anything uh, with, with, uh, with making these decisions, you have to consider, you know, her thoughts as well, mm -hmm. because you know it, it, it's both you. Uh, yeah. The business is both you and your wife, so yeah. you have to uh, ask her, you know, what she thinks about it. Mm -hmm. So, on a personal note, you have to also be settled with what are the changes that could happen, mm -hmm. what are the the upsides, what are the downsides. Mm -hmm. You have to be really uh, aware of these things. Would you lose control? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you willing to give up? What if you're not majority? What if you're yeah. if you're the minority? Uh, what, what what do you have to do? Mm -hmm. And of course, for me, while thinking of all of these technical things, both on a personal note and on the company level, is definitely you have to pray about it. Yeah. Uh, for me, is you know, it was a nice verse that I I read in Proverbs. You know, you know, a man can roll the dice, but it's yeah. it's God who who decides the outcome. Yeah. So. You just have to understand that uh, you ask God if this is the right decision, and then if if it's if He says that it is, then trust God that you know He'll bring you to where He wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And whether whatever that what happens, you know, mm -hmm. it's always something good that will come out eventually. 
So it's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. Yeah, so one of the one of the things that I took away from that is if you're in the middle of an MA or a merger and acquisition deal, mm-hmm. always first prioritize asking God. Amen. Right. So we roll the dice. Entrepreneur, the definition came from the French word entreprende. Yeah. Entreprende means someone who takes risks. Exactly. So that's us. We roll the dice every day. Yeah. And God decides the outcome every day. Mm-hmm. So first pray and then also decide for yourself. Ask your spouse if uh, this is the right thing for you to do. Mm-hmm. And consider your people. Your people. Uh, those are yeah. the things that, that I, I learned from that. Yeah, because people, you know, uh, it's really important that what in whatever venture that you start uh, in, mm-hmm. Uh, that be a, a small team, a big team, a new project, uh, an ongoing project. You have to make sure that you have the right people, mm-hmm. and you build the, the the trust with them. The, you build the relationship with them. So I was, I'm wondering now, how did they react, and how did you break the news to them that hey, you know, guys, we're getting acquired, um, or we're gonna we're gonna be merging. Of course, uh, for them was a surprise, and at the same time. Uh, some of course it's something that's uh, exciting because it's you know it's new mm-hmm. and for a lot of them I, I would say it's it meant stability yeah so that's the good part but I think in my case the nice thing about it is because they 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 uh, they built a, a, a nice and solid relationship with me mm-hmm. their concern was sir will I be reporting still to you mm-hmm. because we want you yeah so yeah. as touching it, it may sound, but for me, it's that shouldn't be always the case because mm-hmm. you, you build them to be independent on their own yeah. as well. So uh, I think that was their, their primary concern. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, of course, you have to gear them up and you know yeah. tell them that you know this is this is growth, this is yeah. uh, positive growth, this is not negative. Yeah. So um, uh, eventually, they took it in a positive sense, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, I will always tell them you know this is not just. A single person's feet. This is technically a contribution of everybody. Yeah. Down from the HR down yeah. to the admin. You know. Yeah. All of these people contributing to the success of this yeah. company. Yeah. To who we uh, who we are today. So yeah, it's really all of them. Yeah. Not just me. And I'm curious, and you may or may not answer this, and I respect that. Mm-hmm. So there are people who stayed with you, went with you in the merger. Did you change their contract? Were they able to lobby for another benefit or salary package with the new employer? Oh yeah, actually I did that for them. Wow. So I, I went ahead and you know uh, negotiated a better offer, mm-hmm. a better package. Yeah. So uh, above market. Yeah. Uh, benefits as well mm-hmm. and all of these things. Because they're going to be moving to BGC. That's no joke, right? Yeah, that's no yeah. joke as well. And then of course tenure. So I, yeah. just, I, I had to make sure. All these details that uh, yeah they're as, not going to be laid off yeah because yeah. I, I myself I was an employee myself so I understand you know where where they're coming from right so which is also a good experience that I had so mm-hmm. um, I, I went ahead and made made sure before I announced these things I had it on paper anything new that you're working on right now oh lots of things but uh, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> well as an entrepreneur like I said you always have to you know make sure that you know you have the next thing going or you know what you're working on mm. not in a sense that uh, you have to have a lot of projects no but it's more of you know what you're doing with the 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 uh, the 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 funds that's given to you yeah. so it's being good steward so mm. uh, eventually i founded a company called malaya corp mm. so malaya so it's mm. very filipino mm. but at the same time what it means is freedom mm. so uh, it's really freedom from you know all of these negative things that we we have you know so uh, but definitely it's not just about it's not a nonprofit organization yeah uh, <laughs> with all of these things you know yeah but uh, Malaya Corp right now is uh, we I I started a company as a holdings company of the family that mm-hmm. I, that I have right now and with the funds that I've saved up mm-hmm. and with the little equity that I have is to look into companies or businesses that I could actually, uh, you know, build as cash cows. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we had a conversation over dinner is that, okay, uh, would you go into tech again? Mm-hmm. And given that, that I understand the landscape that we have here in, yeah. in the Philippines or in Asia, it's not the same as how it is in the West. So we don't have VC backing. Yeah. The culture is not uh, the same. Yeah. 
Uh, so what I wanted to do was to, you know, be self-sustaining mm -hmm. in a sense like how Google made it that they have one cash cow that allowed them, you know, to experiment a lot of things. Yeah. So now that I uh, I somehow had a little of residual, uh, you know, uh, uh, reserves is to, you know, get into new, to, to form new businesses that mm -hmm. could eventually, uh, you know, generate me those sustainable mm -hmm. income yeah. to fund maybe into tech or mm -hmm. maybe to something else that's more profitable. Yeah. So I'm currently uh, into two different um, industries. So mm -hmm. for the first one is I'm trying to venture into uh, property development. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking into, you know, developing some properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's some uh, projects and opportunities there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I'm currently uh, focusing on mm -hmm. uh, most of my time right now. Yeah. So that's that's that. And another thing would is in the business of um, uh, product distribution and product trade. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into certain products that we could actually bring, mm -hmm. uh, import or export either from here in the Philippines, outside mm -hmm. or in that would be in synergy with the different businesses uh, that I'm in as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things. So for entrepreneurs out there who are looking for funding, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not a VC kidding. yet. I'm not, I'm not a VC yet. <laughs> yeah, but you're looking into some good companies, tech or non-tech, that are looking for most. Pro yeah, they're looking for funding. They are. They have equity in stock that they're willing to part with, and you are looking for these good gems, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. you want to invest into them. Make sure they have good, uh, not just cash flow, but mentorship from mentorship, you. Because yeah. you have experience. You've yeah. gone through some of the hardships that we've talked about talked yeah, about exactly. over dinner earlier. Yeah. And these are things that are very, very valuable, especially for startup entrepreneurs out there yeah. who have big ideas, who are starting for the first time, or maybe you haven't started, for, maybe this is your second time, and you're still looking for funding. So with that, how can people reach you? So I, I mentioned that I'm not in social media. In the, I, I'm in social media, but I'm not active. But yeah. you could just probably just uh, DM me in, uh, in Instagram because uh, mm -hmm. I have a pu public profile there. So mm -hmm. just ping me there. It's fine. Or, it's at Isaac. Uh, Isaac Sabas, yeah. Just one whole name. name I-S-A-A-C. S A B A S, -A -S. Yeah. or via email. What's your email address? Uh, my email address is ice dot sabas at gmail dot com. Ice is I C E. I C E. Yeah, got it. So I C E dot sabas s a b a s at gmail dot com. So you guys know where to reach Isaac. If you're looking for, you have a great idea, you think it's gonna work, you want to discuss it, just reach yeah. out to Isaac from there. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Facebook. You have your Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook. It's Twitter. Same, yeah, uh, Twitter. I, I'm not updating it. In, not update. Uh, yeah, yeah so it's just rotting there. It's just there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. It's, so it's wasting my time. Yeah, I'm always thinking about what to say. So <laughs> never mind. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. We have one of the very few people who I know here in the Philippines who have gone through an M and A uh, successfully. Uh, through his first startup which is Pandora Labs Isaac thank you so much for your time thank you it's a privilege and until next time guys keep leading thank you Bro.